In this video, we're going to revisit the topic of proof by mathematical induction. So what exactly is mathematical induction? Well, it's essentially a method of proof that we are going to use quite often. And that says, if you can prove that P of one is true, where P is some statement. So if we can prove a beginning value and we can prove that whenever p of k is true for some value of k, then p k plus 1 is true, then p of n is true for all of the positive integers. So essentially, it's the latter analogy that says the first step, the basis step, proves that we can get to the first rung of the ladder. The inductive step, which is why it's called mathematical induction, says if I can get to some arbitrary k value, then, and I know that from k, I can get to k plus 1, the next rung, then I have proved that I can get to all of the rungs. So of course, if k happens to be the first step, I can get to the second step. If k happens to be the second step, I can get to the third step from the third, I can get to the fourth, and so on. So that's what mathematical induction does for us, is it says, as long as we can get to the first step, and then we can prove if we can get to some arbitrary k step, we can then get to the next step, then we know that we can get to all of the steps. Now, keep in mind that p of one just represents the least element in the set. So obviously for our ladder, that would be the first rung, but sometimes you might be dealing with um, a different value that is the least element. And that brings us to the well ordering principle. So before we get too involved in our mathematical induction study, we have to talk about Z plus. Z plus means the positive integers. So that starts at the number one. So one, two, three, and so on. You might also see that uh, referred to as the natural numbers. Uh, so the whole numbers include zero and we don't want to include zero. So the natural numbers are just the counting numbers, one, two, three, four, and so on. So what we're going to say is our set S is an element of Z plus. So all of the elements are positive integers. S is not equal to the empty set. So S is not empty and that S is bounded below. So bounded below is our basis step. So this is very important that our set is bounded below because we need a first element. Um, so the well-ordering principle says that S has a least element and that's what we need in order for mathematical induction to work. So obviously it seems obvious. We have a subset of discrete, which just means countable objects. It's not empty, it's bounded below, therefore there must be a least element or an element in the set whose value is less than all the others. Now, it's important that we're using Z plus here because if you think about Q plus, remember Q is the rational number. So that's anything that we can write as P over Q. Is there a least element in that? Well, we could say one half. Well, we know that a number less than one half is one third. A number less than one third is one fiftieth. A number less than that, closer to zero, is one one hundredth. And you can see that we could never get to a least element because we can always make the denominator larger. Uh, same thing would go for all real numbers. So it's very important that we're using the integers here for mathematical induction. So let's get back to mathematical induction. We're going to let P of N denote some mathematical statement. So as we are working through mathematical induction, we are going to be very specific about what P of N represents. So it's going to be some statement that involves one or more occurrences of the variable N, which represents a positive integer. Remember, that's that Z plus. Then we're going to prove P of one is true. And remember, P of one just rem represents the least element. So it might be one, it might be two, it might be 45. And then if whenever P of K is true, for some particular 
particular but arbitrarily chosen value that is also, of course, a positive integer, then p k plus 1 is true, then we know that it's true for all values. So let's take a look at an example together. We're only going to do one proof in this video, and we're just going to work through it together. And remember that we're going to show, just so we remember what we're doing, where we're going here, we've got a basis step and we've got an inductive step. And our basis shows that P of one is true. And our inductive step says, if P of K is true, it implies that P of K plus one is true. So that's where we're going here. Now the question that we're going to solve together is to show or prove that one plus three plus five plus seven and so on, plus two n minus one, which is essentially all the odd integers, that the sum is equal to n squared. So I've shown you two different ways how it might be, uh, the question might be given to you. So this is obviously the original for all of n greater than or equal to one or they might actually show you the summation, or they might say, find the formula for the sum of the first n odd integers, and then prove your conjecture. So we're going to go ahead, and we obviously didn't have to find it. We were given that the sum is actually equal to n squared. Um, and we will go through in the next video, one where we actually have to find the formula ourselves. So stay tuned for that. So from here, what I'm going to do is the very first step, which I didn't write in green up above, shame on me. My first step is always to say, let P of N be the statement and then basically say what it is that I'm trying to prove. So I'm going to say one plus three plus so on and so forth, plus 2n minus 1 is equal to n squared. That is what I'm trying to prove for all n greater than or equal to 1. That's the first step. So first step is write p of n. Tell what it is that you're proving. Then we're going to look at the basis step. And again, our basis step, step says start at the least element in your set of values. So we're looking at values n is greater than or equal to one. So one is our first value. So we have to show that P of one is true. So P of one says that one is equal to one squared. Well, because n squared obviously would be one squared. One is equal to one and therefore that one checks out. So the basis step is proven. Then we're going to look at step three, which is the inductive step. And the inductive step has actually parts of its own. So for the inductive step, remember we're going to show that P of K implies P of K plus one. So for the inductive step, we're going to give first the inductive hypothesis. So I'm just going to write IH for inductive hypothesis. The inductive hypothesis is that P of K is true. So my inductive hypothesis says, assume that one plus three plus five plus so on plus two K minus one. And yes, you should change the value of your variable because we're not using it for n, we're using it for some arbitrary value of k. So we're assuming that that is equal to k squared. So if that's true, then I'm going to include the what to prove. Now, this is not a required step um, for in general, I guess, but if you're in my class, you should be writing the what to prove. So I know that that's what you're trying to prove. So I'm trying to prove that one plus three plus five plus so on plus two K minus one plus the next value, which would be using K plus one for K. So two times the quantity of K plus one minus one equals K plus one squared. So again, that's what I'm trying to prove. 
and I'm going to prove it by starting with the assumption that my inductive hypothesis is true. So here's my proof. I know that 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on plus 2k minus 1 is, tr is equal to k squared based on my inductive hypothesis. So I'm really just rewriting my inductive hypothesis and then I'm going to add the same thing to each side. So I'm going to add 2 times the quantity of k plus 1 minus 1 and I'm just going to clean that up before I add it. So this would be 2k and then I have plus 2 and minus 1 so it's really 2k plus 1. Now it's important here that I add the exact same thing to each side. So that's what I've done. Now on the left hand side of my equation, I have exactly what I want. I have the statement that I'm trying to prove. So I have 1 plus 3 plus 5 plus so on plus 2k minus 1 plus 2k plus 1. And on the right side, remember, what am I trying to prove? I'm trying to prove that's all equal to k plus 1 squared. So on the right side, I have k squared plus 2k plus 1. Well, good thing I know how to factor. I'm looking for two values that have a product of 1 and a sum of 2. And that happens to be k plus 1 and then k plus 1, which of course is exactly what I want, which is k plus 1 squared. So I have very simply using mathematical induction proven exactly what it was that I wanted to prove which is that adding k plus 2k plus 1 to each side does in fact result in my statement. Now the very very last thing that I should do is say because the basis is true and p of k implies p of k plus 1 then p of n is true for I'm going to use for all n greater than or equal to 1 by mathematical induction. So that is a great proof. You've got all of the parts that you need. In our next video, we're just going to focus on doing some practice proofs by mathematical induction.